Hi, I'm Sloba Denik from Radix Technologies and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Liberty GT real-time spectrum analyzer to perform the spectrum analysis on the Wi-Fi signal. First, we're going to set up the system to do the measurement and we'll start with setting the center frequency to 2.4 gigahertz we'll set up the span for the analysis to be 300 megahertz and since the signal is coming from the antenna we're going to reduce the reference level to minus 30 dBm now in the upper left part of the screen you can see the histogram of the real-time spectrum of the Wi-Fi uh, signal. Histogram is obtained as a probability density function of all the spectrum data coming in the granularity or refresh period which is set up in this case to be 30 milliseconds. In the lower right part of the screen you can see the current spectrum captured with the um, engine inside of a system and in the lower left side of the screen you can see the history of all the spectrums captured over the time and, uh, and you can also observe what has been going on uh, in, the, in the signal spectrum in the last thousand or three thousand frames first we'll start off we'll, with the analysis of the histogram of the incoming signal. Um, you can see that the color scheme is presenting you how often certain spectrum components appear in the signal. The lighter colors show the signals that they're often um, present in the spectrum and as you go to, towards the darker colors you can see the signals that are really rarely occurring in the spectrum which is what you're actually trying to find when you're doing the real-time spectrum analysis. Now to increase the visibility of those relatively rare spectrum components, you can set up the persistence time to be, for instance, one and a half seconds. And you can also emphasize those components with increases the emphasis factor to, let's say, 0.85. You can now see that the signals that are occurring in a spectrum frequently are with a much lighter colors, but those signals that are only rarely occurring in the spectrum are persisting in a screen for over one and a half seconds and also they are emphasized so you can see them occurring over the time. You can also analyze uh, the current spectrum of the signal. For instance, you can engage the maximum hold of the current spectrum to be displayed on the screen. You can change the sweep mode of the spectrogram engine, for instance, to single and perform the sweeps upon your command. You can also select the frame from the history that you want to look at with the commands presented in the spectrogram tab see the frame a second ago will appear in the lower right screen in the blue color now if you want to do a, a more detailed analysis of that signal you can use markers first you will select the trace that you want to perform marker search on you enable the marker and then for instance do a peak search read out the uh, position of the peak in the spectrum and uh, level of the signal at a peak. Now we'll get things back to a default state with just current spectrum and maximum hold of the spectrum presented on the screen. We'll engage continuous sweeping mode once again and I'll show you how to use the real-time spectrum analyzer to capture the specific occurrence 
um, of the signal and um, perform the analysis on samples causing the change in this application. We'll use the frequency mass triggering uh, mechanism to set up the triggering based on um, occurrence of certain uh, components in the spectrum. In this case we'll use already prepared frequency mask which is a text file that you can edit and change to uh, set up the um, mask uh, the, the, the triggering condition for this specific um, uh, capturing process to be when the uh, incoming spectrum entered this masked area. Now we'll activate the mask and as soon as we arm the trigger whenever the signal enters the mass frequency range uh, frequency and amplitude range we'll get the capture of the incoming samples in real time um, maximum buffer capture size is 256 mega samples and the buffer size is being um, controlled with a pre-trigger and post-trigger time controls. Now you can also observe how often um, incoming signal enters the uh, mask region by setting up the triggering process to auto rearm every time the, the uh, specific triggering occurs. You'll see that in this case every second roughly the signal enters the masked area. Now you can stop the triggering process, rearming of the triggering process and observe closely captured samples with using zooming controls. You can also save the data uh, being captured into a, a file. We'll engage the saving process and arm the trigger. And as soon as the buffer is being captured, data goes straight to the file for the further analysis with the third-party tools like LabVIEW, MATLAB, or similar.